Welcome to meet the finance director, Ashley Pena. This is our new career-oriented interview format by Controllers Council. My name is Neil Brown, Controller Council Executive Director. Before I introduce our finance director, allow me to cover some brief housekeeping items. First, although we have a live, we will not have a live Q&A, feel free to use the GoToWebinar control panel to ask a question of our panelists, and we will respond post-webcast. Second, a video recording of today's interview will be available to all attendees via e email link that you'll receive in the next 24 hours. So with that, let me, I'm very pleased to introduce our panelist, Ashley Pena, Finance Director of the New York Philharmonic, where she is part of a team that facilitated a strategic and financial turnaround. She manages day-to-day -day finance and accounting functions, including a $250 million endowment. Prior roles included the AT&T Performing Arts Center in Dallas and the Dallas Opera. Ashley earned a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from the University of Texas at Arlington. Ashley, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, great, uh, Ashley. Uh, well, our interview format is intended to get to a number of career-related questions, a so-called lightning round of, of Q&A. So <laughs> with that, my first question is, um, you earned a Bachelor of Arts in Communication. What inspired you to pursue a career in finance? And yeah, I, I definitely have a non-traditional path to my position. I, I kind of stumbled into it. Um, as you mentioned, my degree is in communication. I um, Specifically, I was going for advertising. And as I got into it, media planning, the numbers side of it really interested me. And as I got toward the end of my degree, I kind of realized that's not really the direction I want to go. So I went ahead and finished my degree. And after, um, well, in college, my dad, who is a CPA, encouraged me to take an accounting class. He's like, just take a basic accounting class just so that you have some basic understanding of you know, the finance side of, of a business. And I took one and I really enjoyed it. And I so I took several more and I ended up getting a, a minor in business. And uh, throughout high school and college, rather than working kind of the restaurant or retail world, I, I had admin office jobs. So the office was a very kind of comfortable place for me. And after I graduated, I took a job working uh, basically accounts payable for a couple of entrepreneurs who had, uh, they ran five small businesses out of the one office. So I, from there, I was recruited to my first nonprofit role for the National Society of Hispanic MBAs. And I ran accounts payable and it's kind of been nonprofit and finance and accounting ever since. Uh, each position I've taken, I've looked for you know, additional responsibilities and roles to take on. And in nonprofit, there's never a shortage of <laughs> of tasks to to take on. And you know, it's it's a very fulfilling um, career. Neat. So, well, let's uh, dig into that a little bit more. What uh, are the roles and responsibilities of a of a finance director, and how do they how might they differ for a not for profit? So uh, a finance director is responsible for all of the accounting functions of the company, payables, receivables, payroll, uh, revenue recognition. I coordinate and oversee the annual tax return, the audit. In my particular case, there's also a large FP&A component. I built and managed um, the long range forecast and the cash flow model. It's one of my biggest responsibilities is to support, support my team and make sure that they have the tools and the information that they need to accomplish their responsibilities. I, I really like to dig in and understand the mechanics of our business so that I can design and maintain systems and processes that efficiently get the numbers in the right place. My job is to 
connect the information that I have with the people who need it. Um, the finance director serves a, a unique and I consider privileged role in an organization because I, I interact with every functional level of of the company. So I'm speaking to, you know, the production team, the artistic team, the orchestra personnel manager. Um, so I really get to learn about, you know, how the how our business works. And that helps me understand what tools my budget managers need to be able to more effectively manage their budget. Um, I take that information that I get back to my team and, you know, to make sure that they know what programs are happening and how we're gonna account for it. And they help me map out a plan for how we're gonna get it recorded. Um, I guess the one of the differences for maybe a for-profit is, you know, we have, um, we have grants that we have to manage to. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, the earned revenue versus the contributed revenue, that's a little bit different in, you know, how we might recognize that if, is it's, if it's deferred or temporarily temporarily restricted, um, but I it's a it's a connector role. Gotcha, neat, interesting. So I've got to ask. Um, you mentioned uh, in your bio the financial turnaround. Do you think uh, part of that was due to the pandemic? I mean, the orchestra had to have been closed for one year, maybe even two years. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> it was an interesting time to come into the company. I came in um, about six months before COVID hit. I was yeah. recruited uh, by the COO at the time to uh, facilitate and help with this, with this turnaround plan that was a board directed, like we need a, we need a strategic plan. So um, I <laughs> came in and we had just finished putting those numbers together in March of 2020. And we were going to present later that month to the to the executive committee to to launch our strategic plan, and COVID hit and broke everything that was in the plan. <laughs> so, in addition to kind of recovering from you know just this scramble of everybody going remote, and suddenly overnight we went from you know our our business is bringing people together, and now all of a sudden that was a public health hazard. So, you know, we definitely uh, went dormant for a couple of weeks and then we bounced into action, you know, figuring out how to, how do we still engage our audiences and our donors and, uh, and we <laughs> also completely redesigned our uh, strategic plan. So we took the dormancy of our normal day to day operations and we um, accelerated a uh, renovation plan that we had for our performance hall. David Geffen Hall um, got a complete makeover and we open uh, next month actually as our inaugural season in our new hall. So it, it was a very challenging and a little bit scary time, but I think that on the other side of it, we're going to come out stronger and we'll have a, a new beautiful home to welcome everyone back. Wow. Yeah, that must have been just a tumultuous uh, period uh, for you 